Ladies, gentlemen, and what's up, danger? Welcome back to another episode of Out of the Frying Pan, Into the Fire. My name is the spectacular Alex Lenhart, and with me, as always, is the man I will follow to the ends of the earth, Shocker! Just pause, pause for applause, pause for, thank you, everybody. I'm so glad to be here on this show that I've never been on before. Yes, thank you, Shocker. <laughs> and so we would like to welcome you all to the first edition of the spectacular Spider Month! We are so excited to finally get this off the ground. We have been planning this for a very long time now. So between now and the release of No Way Home... Uh, every single week we're going to be releasing a new Spider-Man themed episode. And just for you guys, we're going to release two episodes this week just to culminate the occasion. Not because yeah, we messed not, up. <laughs> not because the first time we recorded this, the audio was completely ruined. Nah, no, Had no, nothing no. to do with this, that. This is attempt number two. It's, it's attempt number one. First try, baby. It's, first try. It's definitely not because we're a week late on doing this so, and we totally ruined the first recording. So... Every edition, we're going to try and keep this updated and keep you guys updated on No Way Home Facts. So we're going to introduce the first edition of the Daily, Daily Bugle, Bugle News! <laughs> Jay Jonas, say it off! Right. Before we get started, your best J.K. Simmons right now. P Parker! <laughs> Parker, where you been? <laughs> Where's my pictures of Spider-Man? <laughs> I want pictures of Spider-Man! <laughs> Maybe I was wrong about him. Maybe he was a nice guy after all. He's He's a menace! <laughs> What's first up on the uh, Daily Bugle news report today? So first off, since we're a little late on this, the second trailer was released recently. Yes, and it is incredible. Second trailer, along with a bunch of TV spots, we too. We got a bunch of TV spots as well. We had some of this stuff planned earlier before the TV spots came out, but now that we got more of them, yeah. it's actually looking more and more like they're See, actually doing it. There's a benefit to fucking up the first time. Yeah, we could talk <laughs> about the TV spots where Doc Ock is talking to Doctor Strange and Peter Parker. I love that. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> so he's, he's Spider-Man, right? Do you know a Spider-Man who's Peter Parker? Yes. yes. Is that him? No. no. I sent you a meme all the, the other day. All the edits of like, all <laughs> the like, different Spider-Man. They got like Spider-Ham? No. Oh. Andrew Garfield? No. no. Uh, Nick Nicholas Hammond, the 70s Spider-Man? My favorite no. was Spider-Man. Like Spider-Man? The... No. no. <laughs> yeah, they're all fantastic. Yeah, the trailer is incredible. And there's a, there's a nice little detail on there that I guess we'll get into right now with the lizard. So the Brazilian cut of the trailer is a little bit longer than the American cut. Uh, I know that you and I have both seen this at this point. Um, it is the final scene of the trailer where Spider-Man is facing off against Electro, Sandman, and the lizard. By himself. By unquote. himself, air quotes. Um, and then if you look just <laughs> closely at Lizard, he gets punched by Ant-Man. He gets fucking decked, decked. and there's nobody there. <laughs> so it, it's just, you know, obvious that there's someone else in that scene who we're speculating is probably Andrew Garfield. It's most likely Andrew Garfield punching him. It's probably Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man. Um, and then I assume that Tobey Maguire's in that scene, Punching too. Punching Sandman. Yeah. Because Peter's going for Electro, isn't he? No, Peter's right in the middle. He's going for Sandman. Okay, Electro's so then Electro... The well, he's probably going after elect Electro, Electro man. yeah. So, well, speaking of which, we're going to be talking about it. The new designs and new costumes for each of the superheroes. Oh, it's super so... Villains. I love goblins, and I really do. People are con like, I don't know if I like it or I like Electro's new costume. I like it, too. I, you know, I liked the original uh, hot take. I actually did like the original one. The I'm because, blue, but... <laughs> because, for people who don't know, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man movies, despite their name, are not based on the Amazing Spider-Man Spider comics. They're actually based very heavily on... On the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. I feel like all film continuities are, if I could say it properly, film continuities are based more around the Ultimate universe. The Ultimates had a really uh, deep impact on like the f the comic book movie landscape. Because the third and Sam I, Raimi movie took a lot from the Ultimate yes. series. And Amazing it's something that we've talked it. about doing a whole episode on, like just Earth-616 episode. Just because uh, sorry, Earth-1610. Yeah, because it's just an interesting universe in general, but just seeing the new costumes and all the stuff around those new costumes, 
costumes. I'm excited for this. I loved the goggles look. I love mm-hmm. having the little bag on the side filled with the bombs. Yeah. And uh, with Electra in particular, uh, his um, he has a look in the Ultimate Universe where he is all blue. And I just, you know, I liked that, um, that homage. Yeah. But... You know, I can honestly say that this new one is better. I'm not going to miss it. Yeah. I'll just say that. I am not going to miss this Electra. <laughs> it, is, it is definitely a better look it's for the screen. It's upgrade, I'd say. And even though it's not particularly comic accurate... Well, I mean, if they were going how are for you? more... <laughs> if they were going for more comic accurate in the first place, Amazing Spider-Man 2 was not it. Because Ultimate Universe... Uh, Electro is all blue down. He's not wearing anything. Well, he had he had two forms. There was a human form where he had that black skin tight suit, and thing. then the all blue electric suit. Yeah, and I think they just kind of combined the two so they don't have Electro Dick yeah. on the big screen. <laughs> oh, is that the Electro Dick? <laughs> This so right, slam right on the Jamie table. Fox isn't going commando uh, on the you know on the big silver IMAX screens. <laughs> no, it just reveals spoilers to fans. It's a difference. Yeah, but that's well. Oh yeah, he did do that. Didn't yeah, he, he dropped. Uh, he con- was the first one. He to dropped leak concept it. art that shouldn't have been released. He was the first one to leak that this Before is probably the- a multiverse movie. Yeah. Because he was yeah. the first one to announce. I forgot he was the first one to do that. He announced his casting immediately after he was cast. Yeah. Which, that, <laughs> that kind of pissed off Marvel. Papa Feige wasn't happy. happy. He's not happy about a lot of things recently. Because mm-hmm. speaking of which, if we're going into leaks, Daredevil. Yeah, Daredevil got leaked. Yeah. Um, there hasn't been... An official confirmation. From what I can see, any like solid confirmation. But the people leaking it have been pretty trustworthy so far. Um, they've been behind a lot of the Spider-Man No Way Home leaks. Yeah. So I am inclined to believe I, them personally. I want to believe it. I would be so happy to see Daredevil in the MCU proper. But uh, the final thing on the platter for the uh, Daily Daily Bugle news report today, uh, and it ties into what we're talking about in this episode, is we are getting a new Spider-Man anim- animated series. Yes, and that will go into the freshman year of Peter Parker pretty much the time period where Uncle Ben dies and he meets Tony Stark. Exactly. This is an MCU canon miniseries uh, describing Peter Parker's first six months as Spider-Man leading up to Civil War. Yeah. So I'm super excited by it. Like, I wasn't sure the first time I heard Uh, about it. The first time we recorded this, Zach was like, I'm hesitant. I don't know for sure if I'm excited or not excited for it. And then I think the the more you've seen and the more... You've seen people who have come out and say they're doing this project. You've been more yeah. open. I've been open I'm about really this excited. from the start. I'm really excited about the art style. Yeah. It's a 2D animated art style. It's not going to be like What If? Uh, and it is heavily inspired by Steve Ditko and John Romita Sr.'s art. So that's so it's, cool. It's going to look so good. I, that is so cool. I'm really excited for that. But that is the end of the Daily Bugle News Report today. And we are going to get right into the topic for today's episode. Do you want to introduce that for me? So today's episode, we're going to be going over every animated show we could possibly think of or yep. have watched. So we're going to... So we watched a multiverse... I of, watched so many Spider-Man so cartoons. We watched so much animated <laughs> Spider-Man content. It was ridiculous. I think at one time I told one of my other friends, it's like, I'm... If I have to hear Uncle Ben die one more time. uh, How many times we got to teach you this lesson, lesson, old man? man. (laughs) I I, love it. It was so much Spider-Man content at one time. Because over the last... So I don't know how long you've been watching Spider-Man content, but I've started... Oh, long, long time. I started like in September watching over everything again. Yeah. I started probably early October... Uh, trying to catch up, mainly watching shows I had never watched before, like uh, the uh, Ultimate Spider-Man and the new 2017 Disney Spider-Man. I guess it's not new anymore. No. But, you know, stuff like that I was watching. The most recent one. The I, most recent, yeah. I watched almost everything. I even watched the Neil Patrick Harris version. Yeah, and I, and I watched seasons of the 90s animated show I hadn't seen before. Uh, and, you know, of, of course I gave myself a nice little refresher on uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, which we will get no, into. We will talk about that shortly. But let's start uh, chronologically in the beginning. You! Me? No, you! 
You. 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 <laughs> you. I'm Spider-Man. Oh, I'm Spider-Man. No, I'm Spider-Man. Which one's Spider-Man? I don't know, but I don't like either of them. Just shoot them both. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the 1960s animated Spider-Man. A.K.A. the one that people only know from memes. It is, uh, if I remember correctly, it was part of a larger uh, Marvel cartoon franchise thing. Yeah, because they had that going on. I think they had... They had, had the- an Iron Man series, uh, when Captain America throws his mighty shield. shield. Yeah, that... <laughs> Uh, and there was also a Mighty Thor cartoon in there as well. I think the others, might have been an Avengers. I think the other ones just ended way sooner than the Spider-Man one. Yeah. Because Spider-Man one lasted a while, and then it got spinned off into Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, this show is not good. No, it's but laughably man, is it funny. got some meme material. It is funny as hell. It's funny as hell. Because half the time I don't know what the fuck I'm watching. Have you, have you seen the? <laughs> I I think it was I Dubs who did it. It was the cut of the, oh, uh, with Electro. Djibouti Dubs. It was Djibouti Dubs. Yeah, he <laughs> oh, rhymes with the way of my dick and I, <laughs> just just Electro away out the window. <laughs> fuck, he's rhyming Rhyme again. <laughs> I it's, love it. Oh, but there's so. It's like Spongebob's first few seasons, where you could take any clip from the show, and it could easily be a meme. Yeah. This show is so batshit crazy, and I feel like the laziness... It's not really laziness, because it was the 1960s, but like the underdevelopment of the animation adds to that. It adds <laughs> it's so to its good. flavor. It's a chef's kiss. <laughs> it's made... Perfect. It's so bad, it's good, and I love everything about it. It is a um, fantastically bad There's show. a scene, I don't even remember the context of this, but like Spider-Man rolls himself up into a ball and like throws himself at his enemy. Oh. <laughs> it's so dumb. It, it makes me wonder what kind of drugs were involved with the creation of this show. Oh, it's the 60s. It had to be something good. It's the 60s. It's cocaine. It had to be something good. It has to be cocaine. Man, it was it was funny. But I I really don't have a lot to say about this show. No, there isn't much to say except this show is fucking hilarious in the most unironic way. Yeah, it's not a show to watch for, like, good television. It's a show to watch with your friends and just laugh your ass off. So we... Then move on to Iceman and his closet ears. <laughs> Iceman, I swear I'm not gay, bro. <laughs> Sleeps in the closet. <laughs> yeah, they all they all live. Uh, was it Aunt May's house or were they all living no, in an it was apartment? A, it was a flat apartment. Yes, yeah, so they're all a... living in, part, in an apartment together. Peter and Firestar <laughs> get their own bedrooms, and Iceman sleeps in the okay. closet. <laughs> I that joke, is... but I think it's almost literally he sleeps in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you couldn't afford the X-Men fund, so he got the smallest bedroom. Makes me wonder how long Marvel knew that they were going to make him come out as gay. A very long time. Yeah, um, this show is so... Un... What's the word? Uninteresting? Uh, Yeah, boring. It is very boring. I think I watched like 10 episodes just to get a glimpse, like to understand the show and what it is. And it's a very... 70s, 80s? Yeah, it's an 80s. 80s. It's it was an the 80s. 80s. It's it, an it 80s out, show. Yeah. It's a very 1980s animation show where it's not even the good kind of 80s animation. No, it's no, the it's animation, no Thundercats. It's no... No. <laughs> it's no He-Man or anything like that where I can watch He-Man and at least laugh at some of the jokes they make. Yeah. This, it was just... Uh, please end. Please end soon. <laughs> the Kill animation uh, clearly improved from the 60s show but i mean i'd fucking hope so because there's 20 years between them (laughs) well i mean there was i think another spider-man show in between that time no there was another spider-man show running at the same time as this one that's what i'm thinking probably and it's actually really funny because there are moments you can tell where they use cells from the two shows i wouldn't be interchangeably they were they were running and in development at the same time that show is actually somehow worse. <laughs> I don't know how, but it, it is a no, solo Spider-Man show. They probably have the same writers, and they couldn't think of an idea without having two extra people alongside Peter at all times. Yeah, which, you know, it, this show does some, one thing really good, 
where it's introducing casual audiences to a wider variety of Marvel villains. Oh, yes. Which, you know, hadn't been done yet. No, it... it So, like, you got Magneto, you got Doctor Doom, you got, you know, really big-name Marvel villains that casual audiences who just want to see Spider-Man may have never heard of. I also love how they transform in the show. Yeah. Just freezes himself <laughs> to transform. He's he's great. Uh, but like I said, these early Spider-Man cartoons, there's really not a lot to say about them because they really didn't understand what they were doing yet. No, um, they, they were trying to figure it out and they didn't know what the best formula to use was it yet. I watched a documentary on Disney Plus where they were talking about, I don't, God, I don't remember what this one was called, but they were talking about um like the behind the scenes of marvel like starting all the way back at timely comics and up until like 2012 Mm -hmm. um and they're talking about this period where they're trying like hell to get a good marvel tv show and they just can't do it until the 90s roll around yeah because the 90s had well we'll get into that but this is more x-men than it is spider-man yeah where in the 90s well i'll just do it now in the 90s x-men show The show was originally had been, what, on the back burner since the 70s. Mm -hmm. Like, they wanted to do an X-Men show, but it's like, it can't be done. It's impossible. Nobody can get a group of team like that (coughs) to work successfully. And then the director at the time in charge of Fox Kids said, I want to do it. He was the one and only person. It wasn't a he. It was a she. Sorry, yeah, she. She wanted to do it. um, she wanted the show to be greenlit. She wanted it off the ground as much as possible to the point where she's like, hey, I want this show. Please make it. And they went, fine, we'll do it. But if it fails, you're fired. You're canned. You're out of the company entirely. Yeah, she really put her, uh, she put her, put her, her job heart and soul there. into the show. And it was a massive success, which leads us into Spider-Man 90s. Okay, so this is going to be a repeating theme for every episode um i full-heartedly believe that spider-man's greatest enemy is avi arad the uh you know big wig producer who's worked on it's... every <coughs> every well, spider-man project starting all the way back in this it's, 1990s it's like a scooby-doo villain <laughs> yeah in this 1990s cartoon so like one of the big issues with the first season of the show and um, we talked about this the first time we recorded this, but the consist like the continuity in season one it's awful is it's awful. god awful. I was bringing this up in that episode too that I think it's like episode five like the first five episodes, Aunt May keeps bringing up Mary Jane, Mary Jane, Mary Jane. It's like, okay, it's consistent at least. And then yeah. in episode five, we see her at the very end of the episode, they give her Mary Jane. Then episode six, they have already gone on a date. Yeah, they, we don't see their date. They do a date off screen, and then Peter is talking to her. It's like, oh, you want to do another? And like, yeah. Episode seven, he's going out with Felicia Hardy. I know. And then like episode eight, Felicia says like, oh no, Peter, I'd never go on a date. And then with he doesn't. You. Know like you already the- did. <laughs> you already went on a date with it. It wasn't a date. No, but she never says that. They act like they never happened, and that was specifically by request of Avi Arad, who said that, who said, well, and I quote, they didn't go children on a date are... until season two. <clears throat> he said, and I quote, children are too stupid to follow a serialized show. As the X-Men was still going, that had already had, what, two seasons by then? He's the biggest prick, (laughs) I swear to God. X-Men had two seasons by then, was one of the most successful cartoons around. What else was going on at the time during Spider-Man's animation? Oh, Oh. right, Power Rangers, one of the biggest serialized shows ever. Mm -hmm. Batman the Animated Animated Series. series, One of the biggest. Literally, these shows were inspired by Batman the Animated Series, which I'll admit isn't like heavily serialized, but but it has an ongoing continuity. It's this. It makes sense episode to episode where Mm -hmm. something has happened in the previous episode that can affect the next one. Where these were just ah jump around, jump around, and then season (laughs) season two they finally decided to go okay, let's we can actually do it now. We can tell full stories. Mm -hmm. Where I think they started to name the each season is actually named after an arc. Yeah, and that brings me to my second 
problem with the show is that the entire show is a toy commercial. Oh, it truly is. Like, you have characters like Rocket Racer and Big Wheel who are specifically designed to sell toys. What's that? What? Is that Blade? I can't tell. His skin color is way too white. Yeah, and they got like, they the got, whitest Blade they got I've the ever seen. the whitest Blade I've ever seen. Like, that they, man's barely mixed. They, they got Blade, but he's 1 16th African American. Pretty much. <laughs> no, I'm 1% Cherokee on my side of the family. <laughs> exactly. That That's what they did to Blade. To the point where, like, until he said his name, I wasn't sure That's, if he was actually That is what happened like... to me when I sat and watched the episode, when I was like, oh, the title's Blade. Oh, shit, is he showing up in this episode? There's a guy on a random motorcycle coming in, climbing What the fuck goes... was with the motorcycle? It's like, who the, f- it's like, who the fuck is riding a motorcycle? And yeah. then I realized, wait, is, is that Blade? He's like, I'm a vampire. Oh, my shit, that's Avi, Blade. Avi Arad made the demand that he did not want a single character on the show, save for, like, like the civilians... Who he couldn't sell action figures of. So, it's, it's starting funny. in season three, when they introduced uh, Madam Web, the show writers had to fight like hell to get her in the show because Avi Arad said, and I quote, nobody's going to want to buy an action figure of some old broad. Oh, it's so. He's so awful. Old. My favorite detail is He's that every, every episode in season two has an obvious toy that you can buy. Yes. Uh, season, I'm trying to think episode one, you can probably buy the Sinister Six set. Yeah. And then let's keep going. Um, there's Mobius. There's, there's Felicia Mobius, Hardy. There's uh, Blade and his motorcycle. motorcycle. Punisher before him. <laughs> yeah, Punisher showed up. Punisher the, showed up in the Punisher th- van. In the van. Like he had he had a white van, <laughs> a white fucking free candy van. <laughs> he had a free. Fun- <laughs> I'd like to add the detail that Punisher and Blade were pretty much the same fucking character. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, this show does something really weird. And it obviously wasn't on purpose because it hadn't happened yet. But, like, this show frequently alludes to 9-11. Oh, yeah. Like, obviously it wasn't on purpose because it had not happened yet. But, like, there's an episode where someone tries to attack the Twin Towers. Uh, uh. And there's an episode where um, part of the... Oh, speaking of figures you can buy, uh, Man Spider. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, During the Man Spider arc, where they're in the basement of the Twin Towers, and (laughs) Punisher finds him by tracking the, 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 uh, the bomb residue from the... I think it was 93 bombing of the World Trade Center. Which was, if you don't no, it know... it was uh, Craven who tracked him. Craven, yes. It was Craven had the smell of, I think it was gunpowder? Yeah. He tracked the gunpowder um, to the same place where the 93 bombings happened. Yeah, which, if you don't know, was actually Al-Qaeda's first attempt to collapse the Twin Towers. It just, it, it failed. Um, but yeah, this show frequently makes me think of 9-11. Like, and it's so weird See, you think of that, but when I watch the show, I think of only two things that immediately come to mind, and one of them I used for the intro of this episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the, the voice actor on this show... I'll follow you to the ends of the earth! Uh, voice acting on this show is really... Um, that and when I'm... It's not bad. No, it's I not I will awful. say all the actors are very talented, but <laughs> also, uh, we I didn't get to bring it up in the first time we tried filming this. Fucking Hobgoblin's just Mark Hamill trying not to be the Joker while being the Joker. He um, this show made Hobgoblin my favorite Goblin. Like he's so good in the role, but oh, he triple like you said, stabs people in the back. Like you said, yes, he's definitely doing like a toned down version of his. He's Joker just doing voice. Joker without trying to do Joker, but. He's not he's not insane like Goblin or Joker would be. And it's I feel like he's scarier than Green Goblin. Just a smidge. Yeah. Like not a huge amount scarier. This but show just a made me a massive he isn't hobgoblin. Terrified, fan. he's more calculated. <clears throat> yeah. Which is horrifying. Because he stabs four people he stabs the same two people in the back twice. Yes. He stabs 
Osborne the first time, then Fisk, then Osborne again, then Fisk. <laughs> Fisk again. I don't know why they keep inviting him back. <laughs> it's like, you already betrayed me the first time. Why should I keep you? Because uh. I can make you money. <laughs> it's all about the money. It's not always about the money, money Spider-Man. It's about the, the Mets, Mets, baby. baby. Love the Mets. Mets. Come on, get a home run. Love the Mets. Mets. Let's go. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later on. Well, I mean, we're talking about this series. It's Fisk. Yeah, it is Fisk. This show is just Fisk central. <laughs> um, they do a really great job with Fisk in this show, though. Oh, he's great. He's so good. Um, oh, but yeah, another example of everything needing to be able to sell toys. Um, all the wheelchairs on this show are hover chairs. Yeah. So you've got Alistair Smythe... And also uh, Professor Xavier, who makes a, an appearance. And admittedly, his design is pulled from the X-Men, X-Men show. show. But it's very obvious that he's designed to sell toys. I mean, the show also had one of the first big cartoon crossovers. Yeah. Where they had the Secret Wars arc. This show was more or less like the... Um, the first attempt at the MCU. It truly was. Where they had the Fantastic, F- except with the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Well, the Fantastic Four was there. Well, I meant MCU. Oh, with the Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're getting there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I still want John Kowinski to be. Dude, he'd be so good in that he'd role. He'd be so good. But, um, yeah, this was kind of like the beta version of the MCU where you've got X-Men, you've got Spider-Man, you have Iron Man, you have um I think Hawkeye shows up at one point. Captain does? America. Yeah, he does. Uh yeah, White Nick he's... Fury. Yeah, the White Nick Fury. <laughs> the... <laughs> this is before we got the cool Nick Fury. Fury. This is the Oh, what is it? The joke with like cool Nick, not so cool Nick. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool Nick, cooler Nick. Cooler Nick, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I want to talk about that really quick. Did, do you know the story of how um, the Samuel L. Jackson uh, Nick Fury came to be? Yes, actually. It's really funny. It's so I'm going to tell it for the audience really quick. So the. Um, bringing everything back to the Ultimate Comics, because like I said, they had a astounding impact on uh, comic book media as we know it today. But in Ultimates number one, which was uh, their version of the Avengers, that we are introduced to Nick Fury, who looks a fucking lot like Samuel L. Jackson. Um, and this is before Samuel L. Jackson was cast as Nick Fury. So this this comic came out in two th- uh, the year two thousand, and then he was cast in two thousand seven, and then Iron Man released in two thousand eight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they used his likeness because the writer, uh, sorry, the uh, the penciler, the penciler, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. The penciler for this comic was a really big Samuel L. Jackson fan. But they used his likeness without asking, asking him. him. <laughs> so Samuel L. Jackson, who, if you don't know, is already a huge comic book fan, saw it and freaked. picked up the comic one day, and he goes, "Wait a minute, that's me." <laughs> <laughs> he had no problem with it either. He had no he problem with it. He was it. so cool with it. And basically, he said, "Is like, hey, if you ever do this in a movie, call me." Yeah. And they did. So that's how that ended up happening. Uh, and he's so popular now that they brought him over to the main continuity as Nick Fury Jr. As long as Nick Fury Sr. is still... Still on the moon. <laughs> still on the moon, baby. Yeah. Uh, comics are weird, but we won't get into that. <laughs> um, what else What else with this show? Uh, oh. Mary Jane melts. Yeah, and we never get a resolution. We for never that. get okay. That's one of the things where they announced X Men '93, and I'm super excited about that because I would love to see a good finale for the X Men show. Because it really never, none of these shows really got a finale. No, where they got a conclusion, and it's like, well, that's all you're getting, guys. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, and I I brought this up the first time where like a continuation of this show would have to be, like, a multiverse thing. Because uh, if you don't know, 
This Spider-Man he's is canonically dead. dead. He's fucking dead. Yeah, so I think Speaking it was, was next... Spider Verse or Spider Geddon this happened. It, it was, I believe, the first one. I think it was so, first. Spider Verse. Which and we... if now you have to accept that this Spider-Man and Spider-Man Limited are the same yeah. character. Yeah. Right? Like I think that's pretty widely accepted. Which does lead us into Spider-Man Unlimited. Yeah. Um, if, um my only the... thoughts for Spider-Man Unlimited was Okay. Yeah, that was weird. It's like, this is okay at most. Why are there furries in this? Uh, it's it's Spider-Man, the uh, animated series, except Avi Arad wants all the characters to be action figures now. It's just not that good. It's like, not that good. I can barely good. sit through each and episode where I watch all of the news. is really weird. weird. Oh, God, it's super fucking weird. Now, granted... Uh, I would be so happy if Insomniac put this costume in their next game. I would too. It'd be a great nod. It would be such. It would be such a good costume to do this cell shaded on. Oh well, yeah. Wouldn't that? I because still. This costume cannot work in a three D space. There's only one costume that I want to see in Spider Man Two for sure, and that's Ben Riley's suit. Yes, sensational Spider Man. Yeah, the I sensational love it. Spider Man suit. I want that. In that the is game my favorite so Spider Man costume ever. But this, um, yeah, if you don't know, this Spider-Man is canonically dead as of the Spider-Verse um, crossover comic. Um, they could more... easily just say this is before he time-traveled. Yeah. So you have... Which uh, would be a great... That, which would be an interesting nod to end Spider-Man. Like, if they do a final season of that show, it'd be an interesting nod. They could nod show to, him getting to, brutally to, murdered. <laughs> well, not that, but I mean time-traveling. Yeah. They could show him jumping to the future, and that's how they end the show. But he, no, no, he's not in the future. He's on a different planet. I thought he was in the future. No, he's on uh, Counter Earth. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. I thought he had been teleported to like a few years in the future where everything's more electronical and. No, weird. he went to a different, like a whole different planet. Uh, and also, Venom and Carnage are there, too. For some reason. For some reason. And they have their own version of the Green Goblin. For some, some reason. reason, I don't. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me, but hell, we'll, we'll roll with it. Uh, what I was gonna bring up before we fully move on from '90s was they handled Venom extremely well to the point where they still use this Venom origin to this day. Yeah, we talked about this in our Venom episode. Um, the the ve the the Venom origin that everybody knows is not the Venom the origin, origin from the comics. The comics. It is the black suit story used by the 90s animated series. It's like how Harley Quinn wasn't a main Spider-Man antagonist or a main... Batman. I said Spider-Man. Batman antagonist slash villain forever. It's everyone's like, oh, she's been there forever. It's like, no, she didn't no. come in until <laughs> the 90s, guys. Until yeah. she became popular in the show. So in the, in the comics, I'll quickly tell the story again. Uh, Peter gets the suit uh, on Battleworld yeah. during the Secret Wars event, um, and it doesn't like it, it doesn't change his personality. It doesn't make him aggressive. Uh, it does give him like better powers and unlimited webbing, which is really cool. Uh, the only reason he ditches it is because he figures out it's alive and that it's fighting crime while he's asleep. And that's Grody. And he uh, he's fucking tired because he's not getting any rest. Yep. So the suit is taking his body out on joy rides in the night, and, he has and it's not even like doing bad things with him. No, it's, it's just it's fighting crime it's the same way his, he would. It's doing his job, but he needs sleep, and so he's like, "Get this shit off of me." Yeah. So he goes to Mister Fantastic, and he's like, "Help." <laughs> And he doesn't even get it off, does he, right away? Not right away, no. It takes him a while. Um, but yeah. That's he, why we get the Mr. Bionic Bago. But uh, Venom didn't do anything wrong in the in the comics. He no. wasn't like making Spider-Man evil or aggressive or anything like that. That idea came from the 90s animated series. Yes, where they had Venom immediately change his attitude, make him more mean, aggressive. Yeah. And Venom was just immediately off the bat, bad guy. Done. Exactly. And that is the version that got adapted into Spider-Man 3, which we will talk more about in our next episode when we discuss the Raimi trilogy. Yes. But it's so cool how influential their version of the story this became. This show is super... Uh, I'd say this gave us the best 
one of the best versions of MJ and Peter's relationship for a w- I'd say like animation wise for the longest time. Mm, I I struggle with it because like they were never they never got. They never developed them enough for me to say, okay, yeah. I mean, but I've got good I felt Peter's heartbreak when she melted. Well, yeah. I felt the walls vibrate with that fucking scream. (laughs) MJ! Mary Jane! (laughs) Just the whole house shakes. He. The acting in this show is so over the top at times, and it just. It really adds. I gotta say, this is one of the best... I mean, for me, this is one of the better adaptations of Peter. Yeah. Like, he fits the... You bo- had this on your... Um, top four, yeah. On your top four, did top you? Four. Yeah. He is my, one of my favorite versions of Peter Parker. Yeah. Because he... He has one of the shittiest looks like normal Peter does. And at the same time, he's not cocky, he's not arrogant, but at the same time, he is still not a great person, which I'd say Spider-Man as, like, Peter Parker is not... Not no, Peter's kind of a prick sometimes. Yeah, he can be a prick. Peter can be a um, definite prick. And it, he's definitely... The way he's betrayed has definitely changed a lot over time. But, like, in the original Steve Dicko comics, Peter's an ass. ass. That's, he's, like, a total oh, incel vibe sometimes. Oh, my God. He immediately <laughs> used his powers for that. And he... Like, the first thing he says, it, it, like, in his very first comic, is something along the lines of, like... Oh, uh, Aunt May and Uncle Ben are the only people who've been nice to me. Everyone else can fucking die. Pretty much. <laughs> he says that. I mean, he doesn't swear. Sorry. But he says something along those lines in Amazing Fantasy number 15. <laughs> Which I'm so happy they decided to give him Harry at the very least over time. Yeah. Where, because if you guys don't know... Harry Osborn wasn't a main part of Spider-Man's things until 2000 when he was added to, when he was Peter's best friend in the movie. Yeah, um, in the comics, they didn't meet until Peter was like a sophomore in college? Yeah. Like his second year of college. Hell, that's one of the plots in the 90s show is Harry's looking for a roommate and Peter goes, well, we're not that close. Exactly, yeah. Like they were never super close. It's like, we're not close. You and Flash are closer than me and you. And he's like, yeah, but Flash is stupid. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I think, what Peter says. Like, yeah, yeah, you, you got a point. You, you got a point. Um, I want to take a minute, if you're watching us on YouTube, because I'm going to try to get the YouTube channel updated, finally. Um, look at this lovely little Christmas set we've got going on. Isn't oh, that so pretty? It's my Hawkeye set. Ha- happy holidays, everybody. But, alright, time to move on to uh, Spectacular Spider-Man. Woo boy, where do Ooh, we begin? baby! <laughs> Woo boy! Not only, first of all, fucking banger. Of a <laughs> the, of a theme song. I don't know. I love my radioactive spider blood, <laughs> dude. It's, it's, it's oh, is by the, the way, um, oh God, Aerosmith did that theme song for the nineties. Did oh they did didn't yeah. they? Yeah. So when Peter turns into quote that guy from Aerosmith during the black suit mm. saga, he that was an in joke to <laughs> the guy from Aerosmith. <laughs> that was an in joke about like oh hey we got Aerosmith to do our. Uh, to do our theme song. You know, the most legend, one of the biggest legendary rock groups of all time. Yeah, we got him for a Spider Man show. I don't remember who did the theme song for Spectacular Spider Man. Do you want to look that up really quick? For uh, me? I can look that up real fast. If... Yeah, uh, you can just go to Chrome. Okay. There you go. I don't... Or Safari, I don't care. Uh, Chrome's in the bottom there it is. left. There it is. All right, so, but yeah, absolutely banger of a Spider Man theme song. Um, this show, I feel like most people would agree, is, at least to me... The best. The best adaptation you, you, of Spider-Man. You don't have to say... You just have to say it is the best. In my yeah. opinion, it is the best version of the Spectacular Spider... Spectacular Spider-Man is the best one. It is the best animation show, hands down, in my opinion. Yeah. It is so good. Uh... Yeah, almost got it. Oh my god. It's, it's, it's taken a I feel it's like it was somebody notable. Like, maybe, was it like the Bare Naked Ladies? I don't think it was them. The Tender Box. Huh. I don't know who that is. Oh. I, I thought it was someone, like, super noticeable. Super no, notable. 
No, it just looks like it was. All right. The Tender Box, yeah. Okay. Okay, let me look up yeah. the Tender Box. Let's I have no idea who the fuck that is. But um, animation-wise, this show goes for a much more simple, a much more simple approach. Uh, and that really benefits it because it gets super fluid animation and really complex fight scenes. This show, animation-wise, it holds beautiful. up incredible today. Yeah, I have no idea who they are. Uh, apparently they're on Spotify, so that's cool. Yeah, they are on Spotify. Well, they have over a thousand listens. That's it. Just a thousand? And then they did the spectacular Spider-Man theme song? Uh, over a thousand listens daily. Oh, daily. Oh, monthly. Sorry. Monthly? It's a monthly. Wow. That's not that's shocking. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've never heard of these guys. But the the Tender Box, that is who did the... Uh, I mean, most obscure rock groups are usually the ones that do theme songs. For example, one of my favorite facts... But is, this is such a good one. It's a really good... One of my favorite facts is that uh, Danny Sexbane from Ninja Sex Party did a Power Rangers opening. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but it didn't go through all the way. But he did a Power Rangers opening. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, I was talking about animation styles and so the, the fluidity it, of the show. It looks like a comic. It looks like I picked up a comic book and it just started moving. Which reminds me, um, I don't know if they've ever done this before. I would love a continuation of this series in a uh, in like a limited comic release or even like an ongoing comic release. I mean, it's what I... Because I tell you about the Power Rangers comics and how they're interesting because it's... The Power Rangers comics kick off literally where the show doesn't go. Where there is a gap between seasons 1 and 2 and 2 and 3. Batman the Animated Series did that too. Yeah, where they just fill in the blanks. And I would love that for Spectacular Spider-Man. I've or give seen... Us, or, you know... or my, my, Give us Spy- Spectacular Spider-Man Season 3. That's, give, that's, give us Spectacular Spider-Man Season 3. You know, you're giving us X-Men, please. So, you know, yeah. that would just be great if we got Spectacular Spider-Man We're 3. We're already making a deal with Sony for the movie rights. Let's just fucking do it! <laughs> you, you've already announced that you're giving us probably a fourth Tom Holland film. So, uh, just just give it to us. I know. Uh, I'm so excited for them, too. Because it's been leaked. And rumored the college trilogy for uh, Tom Holland. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. For that I would to be love announced. to see that. But this show uh, is very character driven as well. I feel yeah. like Flash Thompson becomes more of a f- three dimensional character here than anywhere else. Oh my god, yeah. The anywhere only, else outside the, the comics. The only other time I would say that happens is in Ultimate Spider-Man, but you haven't watched that show, so... I, I have watched it. I've well, watched I mean, you haven't gotten to that seasons. part yet. Yeah, I watched the first three seasons of Ultimate Spider-Man, but, you know, that's a lot of Spider-Man to absorb. <laughs> I watched... I didn't need to watch all of it. I just remembered it all. Yeah. Uh, in Flash, you know, in Ultimate Spider-Man, he does have his moments of character development... But he doesn't really develop his personality. His personality Whereas, changes and develops as soon as he gets the Venom symbiote in the show. Whereas um, this Flash, Flash is in Spectacular lit. actually over time starts to realize that what he's doing isn't great. No, he's realizing that he's a dick over time. Yeah. And it's a great detail. My fav- like Some of my favorite changes are in the first, what, second episode, I believe, we meet a cheer... We get the cheerleader, and she meets Peter, and she Liz reali- Allen. Liz, a- I think it yeah. is Liz Allen. Liz Allen pretty much goes like, "Wow, I'm being a dick to this person for what reason? Oh, mm-hmm. I don't have one." Yeah, exactly. And and Flash eventually gets to that point, and all of his friends eventually get to that point. Like all the bullies that you meet in the first episode, by the end of season two, are all chill with Peter. Oh, they hang they hang out with Peter even. Yeah, like Peter. Because they all eventually realize that what they're doing isn't okay, and they grow as people. I think and it's, it's so cool. One of those scenes it. where Eddie Brock knew that they would change eventually, but didn't want to say anything to him because they were like, "Ah, they're you know, they're still young. They'll figure it out." Yeah, and then they uh, Eddie when they Brock actually in this did, season. Oh, uh, uh, Eddie show. Brock is so good in this show too. He is. He's much more relatable um, because you know kids can't relate to. Well, I love the version from the '90s series, just as being a very comic accurate Eddie Brock. Um, kids can't relate to a man who got screwed over at a newspaper by Spider-Man over and over again, but they can relate to a friend who feels betrayed 
because his best friend is keeping secrets from him. And those secrets are starting to affect his, his personal life. They're affecting his life not only on both sides. Yeah. Like, and, and he feels it, like his friend this show is... really shows the dynamic between Peter and Spider-Man. Yeah. Where the 90s shows did it pretty well. And I do love that version where Peter Parker and Spider-Man are very intermingled and mixed real well. This show perfects it. Mm-hmm. Where it gets the perfect balance of Peter trying to figure out how to be a high school junior yeah. while being Spider-Man. Because he hasn't really had to figure that out in the first... No. Like, this... We meet pretty much a fresh, cream-off-the-top Spider-Man. Like, I think he's only been doing it, what, three months, he said? Three months. It was at the end of his sophomore year. He got bit by the spider. Then summer vacation happened. And now, uh, at the beginning of season one, he's starting up his junior year. Yeah, because he still has the spider belt, too. Yeah, the spider belt. I gotta love the spider belt. Gotta love the spider belt. Um, That's something from the early cartoons that really gets dropped later on that I feel like a lot of fans don't know about, is Peter Parker wears a utility belt under his costume. (laughs) It's really goofy, and... The more you think about it, the less it makes sense. But it's just a funny little detail. Well, I mean, he's got to keep them somewhere. Yeah. The web cartridges somewhere. They're not unlimited. Well, in um, in the MCU, uh, he has the little web cartridge holsters on his belt that you can see on the outside. Yeah. So they at least address that problem in a way that makes sense. Doesn't Andrew Garfield address that too? No. Sure. I, I'd say he addresses it the least. Because his web shooters are just so tiny. They're itty-bitty. Like, they're like watches. Yeah. They look like pocket watches. Yeah. The only time I think tiny. they address the web is when he's dealing with Electro. Yeah, and he breaks. Uh, and when he's facing Lizard, Lizard breaks one of his web shooters. Oh, yeah. That's also brought up. Yeah. But they never really mention where he keeps the extra web fluid at. Or if there is any. It's right up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's where uh, Tobey Maguire stores his. <laughs> the amazing cavity search. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this spectacular. No, We're not going there. No, no, no. The superior cavity search. <laughs> We're not going there. Uh, but moving on. Back to spectacular Spider-Man. Staying on topic. Um, they do... The black suit in this show, uh, real well. Like, I'd say halfway through season one. I'd or say ha- season about two. I think that's season one. I think it is still season one where they introduce okay. the black suit. So about halfway through season one, uh, and this is something one of my complaints for uh, future series is that they jump into the black suit a little too soon. Oh, they always jump into the black suit way too soon. They so, need to. Yeah. So the '90s series and this series do it late into season one to where you're comfortable with Peter as Spider-Man before they introduce Venom. And I think that's the best way to do it. This, If anything, I'd even hold it off to like season two. I would say that this show handles Venom a little bit better than 90s does. Because 90s only gives you two episodes of Peter in the black suit and then gives you Venom. I remember I had a um, Venom action figure from the spectacular spider-man series and it was the coolest shit ever i had a close changing peter parker yeah i remember that one yeah i wanted it it was so cool i had it it was where (laughs) he could put on the trench coat and have the shirt over and pants over pretty much Mm -hmm. yeah you lose all the The... parts immediately (laughs) (laughs) oh i had oh i also had the uh the the raimi figure where you could have either Peter as the human spider or as Spider-Man with, like, the rubber mask and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had that. But uh, the designs for this show, while they work really well on screen, also translate really well into merchandise. And I feel like that was perfected from the 90s series where... Some of the designs don't work great on screen because they're obviously just action figures. Like this is just a toy. Yeah. That doesn't happen here. Everything works great on screen and in here. Let's put it like this. The show is so good at setting up for other plot points that the first villain we technically see on screen is Sandman. 
Oh yeah, yeah. He's got that little um, before he's even become Sandman. Was it him and Rhino have got that little uh, Is crime it, duo thing? Was that Rhino? Yeah, I guess it was Rhino. Wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's him. <laughs> we meet Sandman and Rhino before they're even in their main villain costumes or have become their main villain mm-hmm. forms yet. Hell, we meet Electro immediately after. We meet the Vulture and Doc Ock in the first Dude, episode. Vulture looks so cool in this show. Oh, I like love he's this clearly design. still just an old man in the suit. But the red and black color scheme works so good it on him. It works incredibly well. It works really good. We get, like, I think we get a bunch of villains in the start, don't we, technically? Yeah, we, we see get Norman. Shocker. Shocker! Uh, we get, um, oh god. We got... Tombstone. Uh, that's Tombstone. his name. That's what I was thinking of. That's his name. Tombstone. Tombstone and, uh... Tombstone, Shocker. Uh, I think Mysterio's there. In the first episode? In the first I'm, episode? I'm thinking no. first episode. Because we get Tombstone in the first episode. Because there's... All right, so there's they Flint Marco and there's uh, the Rhino. I can't remember his real name. Have got their little robbery duo. Thing. Yeah, and Peter stops them, and then immediately. But I- then there's also Shocker, who's got like this Texas accent, <laughs> which, uh, as weird as it is, I actually really love this version of Shocker. But he's also got like this little team of three he's working with, and I can't remember who the two other guys are. Oh, the two snipers with him, pretty much? Yeah. The one in the helicopter and the one on the ground? Yeah, they're also, like, notable Spider-Man villains, but I can't remember who I they are. I don't remember. Is one of them Silvermane? It, it might be Silvermane, honestly. I don't know. I, and I then have they to look also that up. gave us... Technically, we saw Green Goblin, but I'm not counting that. Yeah, because he's Norman. Because he's just Norman, but we did get... Storm and Doc- Norman. <laughs> we did get Dr. Octavius in the first yep. episode as well, alongside yep. Just Vulture. regular Dr. Octavius. Um, they do Doc Ock in this series really well. Uh, I love the Green Goblin they design. They have one of my favorite Sinister Six moments. Yeah. When they all fight Black Suit Peter. Yeah. And Peter just whoops their ass and they're like, whoa, wait, this isn't Spider-Man. What the, what the hell happened? It's like, Who is are this you? Spider-Man? Are we sure this is Spider-Man? Because he's about oh, to fucking kill me. Dude, the scene on the yacht where he's facing with Chameleon... When he, disguised she, as the regular Spider-Man, not knowing that Peter has changed his costume to the black suit. That and him with Felicia in that episode. Yeah. Uh, there's so many iconic moments from this show that I absolutely adore. See, uh, they the throw, Halloween episode. Oh, the ho- when he shows up in the he Spider-Man. He shows up in his costume and just takes off his mask and everyone's like, Oh, hey, Pete. Because it's fucking Halloween. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, Peter. Where'd you get here? It's yeah. Like, Isn't this a cool Spider-Man costume? I made it myself. And Flash is like, doesn't look anything like Spider-Man. You look nothing like him. This, it's hilarious. I love those jokes where people are like, ah, oh, you don't look anything like him. <laughs> it's like the opposite of Daredevil where everyone's like, you're Daredevil. He's like, no, I'm not. I'm it, Matt Murdock. It, it reminds me of um, this really funny history fact where Charlie Chaplin oh it's entered, entered a Charlie Chaplin contest had entered a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest and lost <laughs> I think he got last place. I think he got last place yeah um it's so this show is full of so many great moments if you haven't seen it, it it's only two seasons so give us, it, it's give us not hard to get through it's not a very difficult show to finish. I think it's like it's 20 episodes per season. Something like 20, that. 20, 25, yeah. close to. So I highly recommend seeing it if you haven't already. It but is... we won't waste too much time just gushing over this show. And are we going to keep sucking the show's dick? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, we don't have the time to, to, to keep sucking this show's dick. Oh, so we're we going to move on to... <sighs> Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Okay, so this is probably the show I unironically watched the most of just because <laughs> every Saturday, every morning before I went to school, this was the only fucking show on. And I was like, I'm going to watch this show then because it's the only one on and I'm bored. I... And so I've watched most of the show just from that and the other half of the show from just, I was like, screw it, I'll watch the whole thing. So I sat down, watched the whole thing before we even did spider month i sat down and watched the whole thing like before this was even a the podcast was a twinkle in our eyes yeah (laughs) so i had seen all of this and so i think it's overall i think it's an all right show i think they have a lot of good ideas set up in the show but terrible execution yeah the show i don't hate this show as much as i expected to going into it because you know online you read all these terrible things about the show 
Um, and I'm sure a lot of it just comes from the fact that it followed up Spectacular Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. It, but immediately it was a disappointment from Spectacular Spider-Man. But at the same time, uh, this is the first show where Disney got their hands on the rights to Spider-Man. And they wanted you to know it. So almost every episode has got some kind of crossover character. What's that? It's Iron Man. It's Iron Man for the fifth time this season. Which, I mean, it was cool to get Iron Man near... We got the Iron Spider suit in, at immediately, I think. Yeah, although I appreciate that he doesn't use it all the time. No, he only uses it... I think he used well, it he really during that it. episode, and then they were like, yeah, I can't rely on the suit forever. Yeah, so I, I appreciate that, and it's something that I wish they would have brought over to the MCU, but... If that would have been a cool idea, but You no. know, whatever. Um, he, they gave... up. So, m most of the cooler stuff that I remember from the show, and sitting down watching the show, was the later stuff. And it's the stuff you haven't even watched. I've seen clips. Like, they gave us Agent Venom. Yeah, I've seen clips of Agent Venom. Probably. Agent Venom's really interesting, and they made Flash Thompson a more interesting character. As time went on... Now, he... here's my question. Did they cut off... Uh... <laughs> Did they cut off Flash's leg before they gave him the suit? <laughs> no, I would have laughed. God, that would have been so I fucking I think he funny. broke his leg before he got in the suit, though. Just like, hold on. <laughs> we need to have some sort of compensation. I just take his fucking leg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spidey, take well, his fucking leg. He can't go to Afghanistan. He's like 17. Same. So what are you going to do? Cut they, off his leg. They gave us... One of my favorite crossovers, which they did, they did Spider-Verse. They yeah. literally did Spider-Verse. I think Spider-Verse's storyline was going on at the same time they did in the cartoon. So I can't say it's Spider-Verse before Spider-Verse, but yeah. it is Spider-Verse. They gave uh, us Spider- The 90s series did Spider-Verse before Spider-Verse, which somehow did not actually have any... Thing to do. Any inspiration on the eventual Spider-Verse, but, you know... Because <laughs> they one of the interest my favorite um, Ultimate Spider Man episodes are the crossover episodes where they travel through dimensions and see the other Spider Man. Like we get a CGI fight, big CGI with twenty ninety nine, yeah, and we get Miguel. a two D animated one with Spider Ham, and then he visits Miles. He goes to the actual <laughs> Ultimate Universe and mm -hmm. sees Miles, and Miles' first reaction is, "Oh my God, am I dead?" <laughs> It's like, whoa, 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 why would you think you're dead? It's like... Because you, you are. Because you're dead. Uh, it's... You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of WandaVision. It kind where of... Where Agatha's like, am I dead? <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, of course she knew now. But now we know that, you know, having seen the series... Because he was like, you're Peter Parker. It's like, yeah, I'm Peter Parker. What about it? You're Peter Parker, aren't you? Takes off mask. Who are you? <laughs> Who the fuck are you? <laughs> And that's kind of the reality. It's like, I'm Miles Morales. I watched you die. Yeah, it's messed up. But it does have a good emotional scene in it where he visits his own grave. Yeah. It's like, how fucked up it's got to be to visit your own grave site. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. Uh, there's that, and then they keep Miles throughout the series. They try and do Spider-Gwen justice, but I just don't. I dislike it. This is going to be mostly me talking about the show, because Zach only got to season three. I want to talk about some of the early stuff, too, because the show struggled in the beginning. Um, oh, it really chugged in the beginning. So we have we talked about the Ultimate Comics. Uh, the Ultimate Spider-Man comics was uh, headed by Brian Michael Bendis as its lead writer. And they brought him on to do episodes of the show. And I'd say all of the best episodes in the first three seasons were, were from him. all written by were Brian Michael him. Bendis. Like, this show is either extremely hit or extremely miss. Yeah. And there's no in-between. There is no episode where I'm like, that was just okay. It's either extreme hit or extreme miss. Exactly. I mean, so it has every, some... Of, like, every time that I saw Brian Michael Bendis' name show up on screen, I knew I was going to enjoy this episode. If it didn't, there was still a chance he'd be good... But it'd be a much lower chance. So, here's the thing about this show. They really tried to make, sell toys. Yeah. Like, really tried this time. Like where I they, guess we're kind of done beating around the bush. Uh, the spider cycle. <laughs> oh, God. It's better than the Spider-Mobile, let's be honest. But the Spider-Mobile, like, in the comic, was always meant to be dumb. Like, 
even Peter said, why the fuck do I need a Spider-Mobile? It climbs up walls. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Even Peter was like, all right, I'm only doing this because you're paying me. me. This is money, money in my pocket, so I will... T- Didn't he not get paid for that, too? Because yeah, he, he ended because up they wrote, paid. Because they wrote the con- the check to Spider-Man? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then... But in this show, Peter, like, loves the spider cycle. Oh, he, he uses it uses, all the time. He uses that shit I, way too much. I hate it. It's so dumb. They eventually take it away. Yeah. Later, ver- late as the show goes on, they pretty much take away almost everything he had in the first season, add new stuff in to change it up. Yeah. Where my biggest thing is, I we joked about Spider-Man and Amazing Friends. No, that's the title of this show. Ultimate Spider-Man oh is it literally Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends. This show, it feels like really wanted to be Teen Titans. It truly did. And it failed at every turn. Yeah. <laughs> where they gave us four groups of people in season one. Season two kept them, I think, until mm-hmm. season three gave us four new people. Yep. And then season four gave us these four people again. And then it season really... five and five throughout the rest of the series gave us the Spider Squad. Watching this show just made me sad that I wasn't reading the Ultimate Spider-Man comic because it is superior in literally every way. Yeah. Like, the Except art for- style... Dude, if they had used... Um, if they had Brian Michael Bendis writing and uh, Mark Bagley on to help form the art style... I swore he did the later, most of the later seasons. He didn't. I swear he was on No, because you can always tell when Mark Bagley is on a Spider-Man project by the way that he draws the back emblem. That is true. Yeah, he has a very specific way of drawing that, and I love it. It's so cool. I think Ultimate Spider-Man has some of my favorite... Li- the best part of Ultimate Spider-Man is literally clips, because, let's be honest here, this is the most annoying Peter Parker ever. It is. No. Mm. Oh, wait, we still got we'll, one more. To, we'll we get st- to him. We'll still got one. He's close to the most annoying. I'm going to get loud when we talk about him. <laughs> I never thought I saw a pedophile being Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea where you were going with that until you said it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so Drake Bell plays Spider-Man in this series. And, you know, he's pled guilty to endangering minors and soliciting uh, sexual favors for minors. So, yeah. He, so, Spider-Man's a pedophile yeah. in this series, technically. Yeah. Spedo man. Spedo man. <laughs> Just going over that, I think he does a fine job as Peter. His voice is fine for him. It's a little annoying at times, but I whatever. feel like when he's being serious, it's the best voice. Like his best yeah. lines are when he's actually trying to be serious Spider Man. And serious yes. Spider Man, the show is the best part of the show. Everything oh, out, everything outside of serious Spider Man is just fucking stupid as hell. Exactly. Um, but again, I can't. I can't support what he uh, what he did. No, his performance just because of what he did. My favorite show was Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was telling you this, but I I watched this podcast and it was an older episode from before uh, from before the news broke about it, and they're talking about Drake and Josh, and they're like, man. Drake Bell is so much cooler than Josh Peck. He seems like such a nice guy. <laughs> like, oh, that did not age well. It's like, good thing I always like Josh more. Yeah, I know, right? And, and now I'm like, dude, Josh Peck is awesome. <laughs> the only addition that makes him bad is he's in David Dobrik's vlog. Yeah. Well, he hasn't done those in, like, years, I think. He no, hasn't been he a hasn't. part of it. He hasn't. But, uh, yeah, so... If I could petition for Josh Peck to play Spider-Man... It's funny to think that David Dobrik is now more popular than Josh Peck. What was that? David Dobrik is more popular than Josh Peck. I don't know. Like, well, especially around the the, the trial for Drake Bell, a lot of people were going over to Josh and, like, saying, Oh, yeah, you were always the cool brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... You were always the good one. Yeah, you were. You were right. You were. You were. You were always. Well, you were always my favorite. Yeah, sure. That's what you all said. <laughs> no, Josh was always my favorite. Josh personally. was always my favorite. I just preferred Drake Saint. I just liked Drake Saint, and that was pretty much it. And every other thing, I was like, he's just a dick. No. Yeah. 
Yeah, but you know, it just feels weird to have Drake Bell playing a teenage boy in a show, you know, where he talks about teenage girls. Yeah, at least they gave us a good, a decent MJ at the very least. She fights back. Yeah, she was pretty. She was pretty cool. Well, as I told you, if I remember correctly, she turned out to be Carnage in the end. Yeah, I know. She turns into Carnage. I like and she, I, she literally controls the Carnage symbiote. I will say, again, this show, its art style is really boring and uninspired to me. I wish they had gone with something more similar to Mark Bagley's art from the Ultimate Comic. It's very boring action, too. Yeah. Um, oh, we've completely forgotten to talk about it. The cutaway gags. Oh. Yeah. Can we, can we skip this? The, the chibi Spider-Man. I don't hate, but I don't like it either. It really fucks with the pace of the show at times. Um, they at least gave us a Deadpool the episode. The finale of season one has so many cutaway gags in this super serious moment that it was difficult to watch. It's a weird show where if you are all right with cutaway gags, the show is pretty decent. Yeah. If you don't like the cutaway gags, then you are fucked, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you you will be watching a never-ending story of oh my god. Yeah. Now, you you and I have talked about this and we disagree. Uh, you like the Deadpool episode. I hate the Deadpool I episode. I find it funny. I think Deadpool is a really difficult character to get right on a children's how, show. How can you be mad at Ron Stoppable, Deadpool? <laughs> I mean, that is the voice. Uh, if you don't know, I can't remember the actual actor's name. But I he, think we still have it pulled up. Uh, do we still have it pulled up? The actor who plays... Yeah, there it is. Uh, Will... What is yeah, it? Yeah, Will Freddy. Freddy. Friedel? Will Friedel. Will Friedel. He, <laughs> he was also the court... He was also uh, Mr. Matthews in... What's his name? Eric Matthews in Boy Meets World, mm-hmm. and he is also Terry McGinnis. Yeah, um, I you know I just feel like it's not done well, uh, and it's not really their fault because Deadpool is not a easy character to write for a children's television show. Exactly, he's very much an adult character. I I found him fucking hilarious when he fought Des- Taskmaster. Yeah. I, I found him annoying at times, and a lot of the things that make Deadpool fun, because Deadpool is a character that needs to be written well. Otherwise, he, he's either going to be really great or, or really, really, really annoying. And I felt like this one leaned towards really annoying for I've me. I've always seen Deadpool as kind of a more annoying character, just annoying in a fun way. Yeah. And so when he was annoying, it's like, well, it's Deadpool. I'm not going to be too mad about Deadpool being fucking annoying. It's his gimmick. Literally, I mean, we actually got an animated version of Spider-Man and Deadpool hanging out. Yeah. Um, and you say that about any other Spider-Man show? No, no, I can't. Uh, we may be getting that in the MCU sometime soon. So. I would love Ryan Reynolds and Tom Holland. Tom Holland and Ryan Reynolds have been, like, begging Marvel Studios to do it. So, we'll I would see. Be, that's how they start out, is him killing Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first story they do is him killing Spider-Man oh shit and then he uses the end game time travel check yeah, to go bring back another no, he Peter uses the Deadpool 2 time travel check yeah uh, so I guess we'll move on from Ultimate Spider-Man and yo fuck that's this the show end of the, that's the end of the episode there were no more Spider-Man shows there was shows nothing after, after that. this nothing at all no, nothing at all there was there <laughs> There is no Marvel Spider-Man in oh, Ma Sing Se. There is no Marvel <laughs> Spider-Man in Ma Sing Se. Here I go. Let's start this. by saying that is such an unoriginal title. Just Spider-Man. It's Marvel Spider-Man. True. And that's it. That is such an unoriginal title. Like every Marvel comic has an adjective, or at least most of them do, and that's what makes them dynamic and fun. Give it a fucking adjective, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I shouldn't be so mad about oh, this. Oh, the show am. gives me a sinoplatic gynol. <laughs> I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, I'm referring to the first episode of the show where Peter, when he uh, gets... Second a... episode. Is it... No, I thought it was first, when he was in the cafe with Harry, because second... it was his audition for the school. Uh, he had already gotten into the school on episode one, and then... No, he uh... hadn't gotten in yet, because he had to do the show... He had to do the showcase, and then they allowed him in. 
episode two because he was in the cafe in episode one because it's like, wow, Harry, I'm so jealous of you. Yeah. Because you go to the smartest school ever. Episode one or episode two, he does this. In so. episode one, he has a brain freeze. Or episode two. <laughs> he doesn't call it a brain freeze. He calls it the what technical term for a brain freeze. What a prick. And so they really lean into this idea that Peter's like this big science nerd. And he is. But he's not an asshole about it. No, this Peter's a fucking asshole about he being a science He's the nerd. most annoying, unlikable character I have ever ever seen and it also doesn't help that this so spider-man is cool because he's a science nerd along with being a superhero yeah but this doesn't matter in this show because everybody in that fucking room is a science nerd he's not special in he's any not way. special in any way what made him spe- stand out well actually the crowd, no he's i'd say he's more special but less impressive Because Spider-Man usually goes to a normal school and is an impressive student. But here, he goes to a special elite school, but is like bottom of the class. Yeah, what the fuck, guys? They completely ruin that dynamic. Well, they make him bottom of the class just because he doesn't do his homework and he doesn't show up. Although, if I'm being honest, like I I said, they really want to lean into the science of Spider-Man... Um, he deserves to be bottom of the class because half the time the science is wrong. Yeah. Um, He'll quote science. Episode, episode one. Uh, this was another quote from episode one. He has a flashback to a moment with Uncle Ben. And they're in the basement. Uh, Uncle Ben is working on fixing this clock that won't move, right? Mm-hmm. So he's got the, the metal gears of the clock in front metal of him. Gear. Sorry. What would let me ask you? What would you do to this clock to fix it? Well, if the gears aren't moving, maybe try some WD forty or maybe yeah, oil it some up. Some kind of lubricant, right? Peter looks at the clock <laughs> and he says, "Oh, I know what it needs. Just needs a little iron oxide, <laughs> which, if you don't know, is literally rust. Peter puts rust on the clock to fix it." <laughs> And it's so simple that you could have... That is such a simple formula that I think basically everybody knows what iron oxide is, right? I do. That, like, how do you get that wrong? He's the kind of prick that would go, I'm drinking H2O while you're drinking (laughs) water. (laughs) What is... (laughs) I, I can't even come up with words to describe also, they how gave much us, I hate him. They gave us Venom super fucking early. Yeah. They gave us Miles super fucking early. They gave early. us Miles in literally the first episode. Was it episode one? I yeah, because he was there at the audition. They establish him, but they don't... I mean, they give us Miles Spider-Man like episode what, five? Uh, episode four. Episode four, we uh-huh. get introduced to Miles Spider-Man. He gets the spider powers and then he gets the suit in five, I think. That's another issue with this show is that there were four spider people... All of them are more interesting than Peter. Peter. Yeah. yeah. Every <laughs> single one of them is better than Peter. In All of some the way. other spider heroes are more interesting and better at their job than Peter oh, is. Oh, wait. I forgot to mention something in the Ultimate Spider Man. What? The Jesse crossover. Oh, God. <laughs> that means, got, ladies and gentlemen, that means the sweet life of Zack and Cody is tied to the same exists universe in the same universe, universe as Ultimate Spider-Man. So that means Iron Man exists. Hold on. Does that mean when Peter goes to Boston, he's going to the same Boston where Zack and Cody live? Yes. <laughs> yes it does. That means Hannah Montana is topping charts in the same universe <laughs> as Ultimate Spider-Man. Just that's, letting you know. That's so great. I love that. I but yeah, no, they make I just, there are not words to describe how much I hate this show. This show was legally defined as torture under the Geneva Convention. They got waterboarding, they have got uh, physical physical pain, and they have forcing you to watch 2017's Marvel Spider-Man. I would would willingly give up state secrets to North Korea 
if they pinky promised that I wouldn't have to watch this show. The Waterboy, no problem. Spider-Man 2017, nah, fuck this now, shit. Now, hold on. You want the new code? You want... I'm desperate here, please. Here's how you get into Fort Knox. Just just don't hurt. Just don't, don't make me watch this here's, show. Here's the Pentagon codes. Please just leave me alone. Yeah, I hate this show so much. Uh, the animation is god-awful. It is awful like the animation has i thought ultimate spider was boring but this show just found a way to make it even worse ever since spectacular spider-man the animation has gotten less and less interesting to the point now where they're just flat drawings with no shading oh um the animation is super inconsistent because like, the backgrounds change all the time. I'm so excited for the new Disney Plus Spider-Man just because this one was such a fucking disappointment mm-hmm. that we need something, something that I can just go, I forgot about that 2017 Spider-Man. Yeah. And the animation for this new one looks so good. I'm excited for it. I'm hoping we get an actual, maybe better animated version. I mean, fuck it. This show, this what pisses me off most about this show and what really pisses me off. I really off got you is, going. Oh, oh no, it. you fucking got me off. This show came out the same year as Star vs. the Forces of Evil was premiering. Fucking DuckTales was premiering. <laughs> DuckTales 2017 is one of the greatest fucking shows I've watched in a very long time. It has some of the best writing, best heart and soul in the goddamn show. And this show is allowed to air on the same fucking network? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> No, what else was going... Steven Universe was still premiering. We were still getting new episodes. Adventure Time was still on, by the way. What the fuck? (laughs) Disney? Like, how can you compare these two shows and go, nah, cancel Star, keep Spider-Man? What the fuck? (laughs) Wow. But this show is allowed to premiere alongside Amphibia, which is one of the best shows going right now? Fuck that shit. I don't... I don't know what I can follow that the up Al, with. The Owl House is being canceled, but last time I checked, the show is still, still ongoing. Still ongoing. Owl House gave me the first Disney confirmed lesbian couple, and this show is allowed to keep fucking going. Are you fucking kidding me? This no. This is you said you were gonna get mad, but no, you've actually made me fucking mad. How dare this show exist? How dare this show be on at the same exact fucking time as some of the God. my favorite shows? Are you gonna kill me? <laughs> and that was it. Podcast over. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching another episode of Out of the Frying Pan. To the fucking fire. My name is Alex Sunhart. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter at Frying Pan Podcast. Pods. <laughs> at Frying Pan. Pan Pods. Fuck that. At Twitter at Frying Pan Pods. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram at Frying Pan Podcast. You can find all of our links to our other streaming sites at linktree.com slash Frying Pan Podcast. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with Sam Raimi's Spider Man, which will probably be coming out the same exact day as this. Thank you. Good night. Holy fuck. <laughs>